If you ever wanted to add an LCD screen, that's touchscreen, to your Raspberry Pi, well then today's video is for you. We're going to be taking a look at Winmaxit's LCD touchscreen 10.1 inch. Stay tuned. Will here for Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Winmaxit's 10.1 inch touch LCD screen for a Raspberry Pi. Or even things with just an HDMI and a power source to this thing, you could use it as an external monitor as well. So Winmax reached out to me and sent this LCD screen to me for free to review today. And they agreed to an honest review, so I said yes. Now this is a 10.1 ISP display with 1024 by 600 HD running at 60 Hertz. And did I mention it was touch? With 178 viewing angle. And yes, it has built in speakers. For the size of the screen, this is $129.99. Now that price point is actually on point if you look at the different size screens for a Raspberry Pi. But they're offering a 10% off coupon for this month. So it comes out to $116.99. Let's get over to the workbench and put this thing together and see what it can do. All right, here we are looking at the back of the monitor. There is two baggies. I just undid the baggie and it came with two pieces. One's a USB port to the micro USB port for the touch and the other one is the micro USB port to the HDMI and that was labeled 4B so I'm assuming it didn't come with instructions so if you have a Raspberry Pi 3 you'd use that package if you have a Raspberry Pi 4 you use this package so that's what we're using okay and I got a Raspberry Pi 4 here it only came with three standoffs so I don't know why that is all right so before I get into putting on the Pi let's go ahead and put the speakers on and that's in this package right here and yes it came with speakers so you you will have sound in theory we should have sound I don't think it matters it doesn't say right or left so I don't think it matters in that aspect and it's got a little sticky thing back here I'm gonna peel that off I'm gonna go ahead and pop these into place and then it looks like we just plug this right in here probably should have plugged it in first let's see if I can get this off once you stick them down they're down all right, so that one's plugged in. It's a little off center. What are you gonna do? So this time we're gonna plug it in first. I think that's the correct way to do it. We'll plug it in first and it only goes in one way. It's metal tabs facing down. Push that in, only goes in one way. We'll take this tape off right here and this time I'm gonna try and place it correctly. All right, there we go. The speakers are attached, that's it. That's all you gotta do. Now we're gonna take out the screws here and it looks like we're gonna put some of these standoffs in and we only got three. And I did contact the manufacturer so I'll let you know if that is an issue. <laughs> And the board will go on it like so. Oh, that's nice. They gave us a little screwdriver. That's cool. And we'll just screw those in. So we have all three screws in there. I'm going to do the HDMI. Put that connector right in there. So this is the shape of the HDMI. And it should slide into the HDMI and right into the HDMI mini on the board. That went in pretty nice. We got that. Now we got the USB to, I guess, the micro USB here. And then I'll go right on this side right here. That looks like all the connections. So we'll go ahead and attach the feet so that way we have a place for this to stand up. Feet are attached, the board is in. External display, you definitely get that ability. I have that right here and I'll go ahead and put this over here and you guys can see. External display works great. Unfortunately, the Mac does not support touch for this screen. I don't know if there's a driver or anything that I could do, but that's not why we're over here. We're gonna go ahead and set up the Raspberry Pi. So if you set it up right, this is the way it should look. Should have the speakers in, Raspberry Pi attached to the bottom, power cord, which I'm gonna have connected to that in a second, HDMI to micro HDMI, and the touch which is USB to the screen. So if we get all that correct, now we just have to do a couple settings on your Raspberry Pi. So we're gonna flash an image, and if you don't know how to do that, take a look at my videos right here. I show you how to flash an image of Raspberry Pi OS. I'm not gonna show you that process, but I am gonna show you what you need to do before you put your operating system in this Pi. All right, so here we are on the desktop. We have boot, a Raspberry Pi operating system that we flash to an SD card. We're gonna open this up. And what we're gonna be looking for is this file right here, and it's the uh, configuration file. And I like to use Atom, 
So I just open up this preset software. It's free. I'll leave that in the description as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through this. There's a couple things that we got to change. So let's go all the way down to the bottom here. And it might be in another space, depending on which operating system you use. I put this on Bullseye 64-bit and 32-bit. I've also used this on Buster. It was 32-bit and 64-bit. The first thing you need to do is this right here is go ahead and put a pound symbol in front of it. And by doing that, you're turning that function off because we don't need that function. And we're gonna scroll down here. And if you go to the website, and like I said right now, it's $116.99. If you scroll down in the description, after it gives you all the great information on it, and we go right here, we're gonna click this right here, all the way down to here, and we're gonna go ahead and copy and paste this right at the bottom here. Boom, like so. And then just file save that's it and now it should work on the raspberry pi just in case for some reason you don't want to do it this way or you already have an operating system set up i'm going to show you another way to get to that so let's go ahead and eject this all right so you have a raspberry pi it's already up and running you already have it in the pi if you're on a pc you're going to go to putty if you're on a mac you're going to go to terminal so I'll go to terminal. I'm going to open up terminal here. I'm going to go ahead and SSH into my Pi. And then you put in the passcode. Okay, now we're in that Pi. And the first thing you're going to do is CD space forward slash hit enter. And then CD boot. And then we're going to go to LS. Configuration file right here. We're going to copy that. And we're going to type in sudo nano. And then we'll go ahead and paste that configuration file dot txt and it'll bring us into that same file and now we can go down and I probably already did it for this one so in this one and this one's a little bit different because it's a different operating system it's a different Raspberry Pi OS and it was actually up here so we want to take we want to turn that off right here and then we want to add all that fun stuff to the bottom and that's it. All right, so this will be in the description down below. What we're gonna do, we wanna add a touch keyboard. So we're gonna just hit Command V in here and it's sudo app get install matchbox dash keyboard. Hit enter, let it go through its process. Hit yes. And now we have a touchscreen keyboard. All right, so now we have the touchscreen attached. So I want to show you this real quick. So you, it automatically works with the touchscreen once you put it in there. And I did put in the keyboard, like I said, and it's under accessibility keyboards. And now we have a keyboard that automatically pops up and we can touch the keyboard and write whatever we want, which gives you a little bit more flexibility. The only thing that I wasn't able to find is multi-touch, and this does support it, but the Raspberry Pi operating system may not. And we can open up a web browser, and it's very responsive, really nice in that aspect. I did run into one problem. I can't play YouTube videos or any other type of video on this LCD screen. I spent hours on this thinking that I did the wrong programming, thinking that maybe it's the operating system, and I tried multiple operating systems. I even even loaded up Cody on this thing to try to see if maybe that would work better instead of an, a Raspberry operating system, maybe another one. I even tried Ubuntu. I tried several operating systems, couldn't get it to work, kept playing with it, kept beating my head up against it, only to find out that it kept doing this. That's right, it kept flashing video. So my conclusion was, it wasn't getting enough power. And I was right. Let me show you what I mean. So I put on YouTube, and if we click on, it does that. And that's a big problem. It just keeps flashing on and off, on and off, on and off. Figured out what the problem is. Take the cable it came with, get a power source, plug it into the power part of the LCD screen, you have sound. And there you go, my recent video. One, and you're out. Mars is Full no screen. longer working. Sounds pretty good. Speakers sound good. Crazy Will here from Crazy Now to lower it because it's being loud. There's a little toggle. I'm going to go ahead and lower that. And you can see it's lowering it right now. So now we've got it all the way down. You can adjust the brightness. 
what you do is you push in on it and up or down to adjust the brightness. So you push it in and up. It's a little bit of an awkward button, but the volume control is really good moving it up and down, but it does need more power than the Raspberry Pi. Now, this might be only my Raspberry Pi because I'm running a Raspberry Pi 4 with eight gigs of RAM. So it might be taking more power than they thought that someone would be using this for. I'm hoping. I haven't tried it on a Raspberry Pi 3 and I haven't tried it on a Raspberry Pi running only two gigs. By the way, the speakers do work with the Mac and a laptop. I'll show you a couple videos of that. Let's go through the pros of this little screen. Pro number one, it's got speakers, guys. Built-in speakers, and they actually sound pretty good. For what they are, sounds pretty great for a little Raspberry Pi screen. This is great for a Mac, extra screen on a laptop, portable gaming, because you have sound. You can connect to the HDMI and then just give it some power. And you could actually hook it straight on top of a gaming system, and I'm sure the USB port would probably power this thing, and you could have portable gaming. So. The touch function. Now, I don't have a PC to show this off with, with, but they say with Windows 11 or Windows 10, the touch feature does work on Windows. So if you do hook this up with the two connections, you would have touch available on this as well. The touch is awesome on this. I love all the ports on this. I love that it has the HDMI on this side, the HDMI in here, another port for the Raspberry Pi, several ports for external power and touch, and I love that they put this little rocker. Cons. All right, before I get into the cons, remember this is a tinker device so I am being a little skeptical but I'm just telling you my opinion of it so we're tinkering with this this is designed to be tinkered with with the Raspberry Pi did not work great with the Raspberry Pi as far as not having an external power supply and the manufacturer didn't know this so it aggravated me I don't know if it's because I have a Raspberry Pi 4 with 8 gigs of RAM and they weren't aware of that it didn't work with that until I figured it out it was frustrating that you need an external power source just to get the sound to work and the video to work on this thing other than that, it does work with the Raspberry Pi. It just keeps flickering. I don't like how shiny it is, and it captures your fingerprints really, really good. So it's it's a little frustrating in that aspect. I mean, you can see I wiped it down before this shoot, and it, it just takes the fingerprints so quickly. Um, I am scared I'm going to break this half the time because I would like to 3D print a case or something for this. I wish they would have given you more. But I do like that they did give you feet, so I will say that. You know, it just it kind of feels like it's a piece of glass in your hand, and if you drop this, you could break it. I'm gonna put this down now. The resolution wasn't bad. I feel like the screen could have been brighter. It's not bad, it's just not the highest resolution that I thought, but for a 10 inch screen, I think it was pretty good. It's a lot crisper than most screens that I've worked with. Now my overall thoughts. I personally really like this screen. I like that it has little stands. I love that it has sound. Like I said, I didn't like that it was shiny. Overall thoughts, guys. It's a four out of five. It's a great little screen. It's got little things that I didn't like about it here and there. If you have a Raspberry Pi project you want to do and you need a 10 inch screen, this is the way to go. For $116.99 right now, I would do it. That's it for me guys. Make sure you like and subscribe if this helped you in any way and ring the bell if you want to get notified when I make a video. And remember, you could do anything if you put your mind to it. Later guys. Every time you think you have a handle on a Raspberry Pi, you don't, because now the screen's working without an external power supply. Can't explain why. Can't. Shooting B-roll, and this happened. I know what you're thinking. Crazy Will's tech show's over. What do I do now? Real simple, guys. You hit that like button, and you hit that subscribe button, and then you check out my other videos. It's not over. I made a lot. It's been a good year.